Hello everyone and welcome to Split Second. Before starting, we would like to specially thank Tsunami, TJ Rap and Mike Purr for being our patrons for one year now. Your support means a lot to us, thank you. This week we have two guests with us, Austin and Josh from Elder Drunken Highlander. You should check their channel out, it's full of spicy deck decks and other EDH related content. You can find the links in the description below. Josh is piloting one of his favorites, Malcolm and Tana. Leitu brought his own take on Vanifark pod combo. Austin is on his personal take on Jessica and Rayan. And Baal is on a divergent Rograk and Silas build. Let's see those starting hands. Josh won the die roll and kept his first 7 with a Blessing Mire and a Forbidden Orchard as lands. Lanwar Elves for Ramp, Eldritch Evolution and Worldly Tutor can get him Buccaneer or Hull Breacher to combo with Malcolm or that Windfall. While Sylvan Library is a great source of card draw to keep up if his plans fail. Leitu kept a Forest, a Minamo and a Command Tower. Finorn Elves for Ramp, while Woodland Bellwork could be better used in his deck as a mana value 6 target for Vanifar. This sounds really weird, right? Preordain is a good cantrip, while Instill Energy is a good way to untap Vanifar in case the chain is broken by drawing some of the necessary cards to combo up. Austin also kept his first 7 with a Forest, Scalding Tarn and a Cassie Wolf Run for lands, Elves of Deep Shadow and Birds of Paradise for Ramp. Razaket needs a way to be discarded to better take advantage of that necromancy. Baal kept an ok hand, with a fiery eyelet, dark water catacombs and not being the first means that gemstone caverns will be on the field as the game starts. Conjurer's Bubble is mostly recurrent card draw with Silas, Mox Opal needs a third artifact to be online, while Narset can dig for tutors or divergent, and Brain Freeze pairs up with Breach for a secondary winning line. Let's split the stack. Before the game starts, Baal shows his gemstone caverns and exiles Brain Freeze to it. Josh starts his turn with a plus in Mire, cracking it for a Taiga, and casts Lanwar Elves before passing. Leitu plays a Command Tower into a Finhorn Elves, letting Austin get to it. He starts with a Scalding Tarn, cracking it for a Taiga, and casts Birds of Paradise before passing. Baltop takes a Mana Crit, which he casts. He then plays a Darkwater Catacombs, which allows him to cast Silas turn 1. He then casts Mox Opal, which is online due to Silas, and then casts Conjurer's Bubble. He finishes with Rograk before passing, hoping to get Divergent or a Tutor for it next turn. Josh plays a Forbidden Orchard and taps it, pondering who is less likely to take advantage from the Spirit, while casting Malcolm. Leitu gets that improvised Spirit and goes to his turn. He starts with a Preordain, showing he might have kept a one lander. He does play a Forest and swings with a Spooky Spirit at Austin before passing. Austin starts his turn with an Elves of Deep Shadow and a top deck Gaia's Cradle. Hopefully Josh didn't give the spirit to him. He then casts Rayan and passes. On his end step, Bal cracks his bubble to draw a card. He takes 3 from the crypt, plays a fiery islet and casts Narset with enough mana for a wheel. He down ticks her and finds a fire covenant, which he casts for 10, clearing the whole board. He then passes. Josh plays a misty rainforest, cracking it for a tropical island and then casts Sylvan Library, hoping that Narset won't stay around for long. Leitu plays a Sculling Tarn and cracks it for a Tropical Island before passing. Austin plays a Blood Crypt tapped and passes to Baal. His Crypt slaps him again for 3 and he instantly activates Narset, finding a Swan Song. He attacks Silas at Josh and targets his Bubble with Silas Trigger. On his second main phase, he casts Grim Monolith, followed by a Rakdos Signet and then casts a Heuristic Study. Josh responds with a Mystical Tutor, giving the Spirit too late. He gets a Force of Vigor to the top. Baal then casts the bubble and passes the turn. Josh draws the force, taps the orchard, giving Late a spirit, hoping he'd kill Narset and passes the turn. On Late's upkeep, Josh fires the force of Vigor, pitching Eldritch Evolution, which was his plan to win turn 3, and targets Rhystic Study and Silas, paying 1 for the study. Baal responds by cracking the bubble, putting Fire Covenant on the bottom and drawing a card, and fires his Swan Song. In response, Josh casts Veil of Summer, not paying the 1. Baal draws but finds no answer. Josh draws one from the Veil and then later draws and goes to his main phase. He plays a Minamo and casts a Kiora's Follower. After some pondering between Narset and the library, he decides not to gamble on a wheel from the top and takes her down. Austin plays a Bayou and casts Jessica, which enters with two counters already. He takes her down to kill Kiora's Follower, Rograk and to damage directly at late. He passes afterwards. Ball script keeps slapping him. He casts a Talisman of Creativity and then fires a Thoughtseize at Josh, revealing Swansong, Rhystic Study and a Worldly Tutor. 
He takes out the Swan Song, as his last card is a mystical tutor that can get him Divergent. He then casts Silas and passes. Josh goes to his turn and pays 8 life to draw 2 extra from the library. He then plays a Flooded Strand and cracks it for a basic island, fearing a Magus of the Moon. He casts Ristic Study and passes. Later draws, casts Vanifar, not paying for the study, and attacks Josh to pressure his life since he's on library. He passes to Austin. In his turn, he plays a Forest and casts Rankle, Master of Pranks, not paying for the study. He swings with them at Josh and chooses for everyone to discard a card. This prank allowed him to discard Razakath, who everyone fears now for a reanimation spell. While Baal lost his window to get Divergent, Josh discards a Brainstorm and late a spicy Genesis Chamber. Baal script learned from Playems last week and slaps him the fourth consecutive time. He then swings Silas at Josh, triggering and choosing the Bauble, which he casts in his second main phase. He doesn't pay for the study as he's holding on to a Cyclonic Rift. He then cracks the Bauble, putting the Mystical Tutor on the bottom, drawing and playing a Forbidden Orchard before passing. On his end step, Josh casts Whirly Tutor, giving Baal the spirit and fetches for a Dockside Extortionist. On his turn, he pays no life for extra cards. He plays a forest and casts the Dockside Extortionist, netting 6 treasures from Baal alone. He then transmutes Muddle the Mixture for Neoform. When everyone thinks he's short on mana to win, he casts Snap on his Dockside. Baal wanted to keep his Cyclonic Rift, so in response he cracks his Fire Islet to try to draw some other answer, while giving the Spirit to Austin to be able to block a Buccaneer. Josh then casts Dockside again, netting 6 more treasures. He then recasts Malcolm and then follows it with Neoform, sacrificing the Dockside and fetching Glinhorn Buccaneer. He goes to combat, and at the beginning of combat step, Paul casts a Cyclonic Rift on Malcolm, to prevent him from winning and maybe casting free commander spells later. He pays for Ristic and Josh swings the Minotaur at Austin, who takes 3. Josh then passes the turn. Later draws a good card, but one of the combo pieces is actually in his hand, rather than his library. He plays a Gaia's Cradle and after some thinking he finds a line, starting with a Court of Calling for 3, not paying the 1. He gets a Trophy Mage, which in turn gets him Thousand Ear Elixir. He casts the Elixir not paying the studies and activates it and tapping Vanifar. He then activates her, sacrificing the Trophy Mage and fetching for a Fate's Teacher. Because of the Elixir, he is able to activate the Teacher and tapping Vanifar, and activating her again, sacrificing the Fate's Teacher. This time he gets a Peregrine Drake and tapping his 5 lands. He then unearths Fate's Teacher and activates him to untap Vanifar, activating her again, sacrificing the Fate's Teacher and getting Tidewater Minion. With them, he untaps Vanifar and activates her, sacrificing them to get the Dead Eye Navigator, which enters Soul Bonding onto the Peregrine Drake. This way he generates infinite mana and then blinks and Soul Bonds Dead Eye onto Vanifar, activating her and sacrificing Peregrine Drake, getting Triskelion. He bounces Dead Eye again in order to Soul Bond it to Triskelion, and this way, with infinite mana, he is able to ping everyone to death by blinking Triskelion each time it runs out of counters. GG. After this close match, we decided to do another game, so let's see those starting hands. Leite won the die roll this time around, and he kept quite the explosive hand, with Windswept Heath and a Flooded Grove for lands, but that Jeweled Lotus allows for a turn 1 Vanifar. From there, he has Priest of Titania to start the chain, but unfortunately already has two of the three untappers at 3 CMC, Pestermite and Bounding Crazies. On top of it all, he still has Veil of Summer for protection. Austin kept his first 7 with a Badlands and a Forest covering all his colors, Arbor Elf, Elves of Deep Shadow and Bloom Tender for Ramp, Worldly Tutor and Survival of the Fittest for Hand Sculpting getting those needed creatures for the job. Baal mulliganed down to 6 with a single Misty Rainforest but the Brainstorm to dig a little bit more, Rakdos Signet can Ramp when he managed to find a second land, Vampire Tutor can fetch the so desired Diversion transformations, Fire Covenant can keep the board cleared of any hate or combo pieces from opponents, Fluster Storm is good interaction or protection and he bottom Diabolical Intent. Lastly, Josh mulliganed once and kept a Cavern of Souls and Scalding Tarn. Soul Ring and Birds of Paradise for ramp, Blink of an Eye and a Braid for interaction to deal with pesky hate and Hullbreacher is always great alongside a wheel. Let's see how this one unfolds. Leitus starts things up with a Windswept Heath and cracks it for a Tropical Island. He then casts a Black Lotus, um, a Jeweled Lotus and then a Turn 1 Vanifar. People still think this Lotus is unimpressive? After this, Austin humbly plays a Forest into an Arbor Elf before passing. Baal draws and plays a Valakut Stoneforge before passing. Josh plays a Scalding Tarn and cracks it for a Tropical Island. He follows it with a Birds of Paradise and passes. Later plays a Flooded Grove and casts Priest of Titania. 
he can go for the win with the drake since he only has two lands, but he does activate Vanifar, sacrificing the priest and getting Hyrax Tower Scout, and tapping Vanifar and activates her again, sacrificing them to get a breaching Hippocamp, and tapping and activating her again, this time getting a Thundershoot Dryad. Turn 2. It's a bit far from City's Blessing, but one turn might be enough. He passes to Austin. On his upkeep, Late gets a Zeppelin. Austin plays a Badlands and follows it with a Survival of the Fittest, with the Elf ready to get something he might need. On Ball's upkeep, Late gets another Zeppelin. He casts Rograk and plays a Misty Rainforest, cracking it for an Underground Sea, and casts a Rakdos Signet to get the Covenant online. On Josh's upkeep, Late gets another Zeppelin. He plays a Cavern of Souls, naming Pyrant and casts a Sol Ring. After some discussion on what to remove from Late's board, Josh casts an Elvis Mystic and then fires an Abrade at the Tender Shirt while Late is tapped out. He passes afterward. Late starts his turn with a Scrib Ranger and is said that the other two Untappers at 3CMC are already in his hand. He activates the Scrib Ranger, returning the Tropical Island to his hand and untapping Vanifar. That, sadly, is worded so that it can only activate at sorcery speed, so no exploits possible here. He then activates Vanifar, sacrificing the fairy and to dream for a Mangalorn, destroying Josh's Sol Ring alongside his hope for any shenanigans with Dockside's or Buccaneers. He then plays Tropical Island and swings the saps at Pal before passing. On his end step, Austin taps his forest with the elf and casts Whirly Tutor for an opposition agent, to try to finish this simic nonsense. On his turn, he plays his swamp and passes the turn. Bal draws and plays a Gemstone Caverns, which unfortunately doesn't generate the colors he needs, so he passes. On his end step, Austin fires at Opposition Agent, to which Bal responds with Vampiric Tutor for divergent transformations to the top. Josh starts his turn with a Boreal Druid and casts an Uncountable Malcolm before passing. Late finally draws and plays a Forest. He swings with Manglehorn and Vanifar at Austin, and the three saps go at Bal. On his end step, Austin activates Survival, discarding an Elves of Deep Shadow and searches for the Magos of the Moon. In his turn, he instantly slams that Magos and in response, Late casts Bounding Crazies, untapping Vanifar. Austin then swings with the Opposition Agent at Baal, so he casts Fire Covenant for a whopping 20 life, clearing the board of all creatures but Manglehorn. In response, Austin untaps his Forest with the Elf and activates Survival, discarding Bloom Tender and getting a Collector Oof to his hand. On Baal's turn, he simply casts Silas, hoping to diverge next turn, and passes. Josh simply draws and passes the turn. Late starts his turn with the Preordain, bottoming one, drawing the other. He plays a Forest and attacks with Manglehorn at Austin before passing. Austin instantly slams the Oof and passes the turn. Baal hopes for a land and he top decks a Scalding Tarn. He cracks it for an island, considering reanimation potential from Austin. And despite having Flusterstorm in hand, he decides to go for it, casting Divergent Transformations targeting both his commanders. In response, however, Josh casts Blink of an Eye on Silas. Divergent will only get one creature from Baal's deck, and Josh actually asks if it was something odd like a Sire of Insanity and Turgrid, which it was indeed, so everyone now roots for it to be Turgrid instead of Sire. And to Baal's sadness, Turgrid it is. He passes the turn. Josh sadly fails to get another land, so he draws and passes. On his end step, Leite flashes in Pustermite and tapping the Manglehorn. Leite draws and casts a card he feels will make the game faster, Genesis Chamber. Austin is all in favor for that, as it helps his aggro plans, while Baal and Josh are way behind on their own plans. He swings with both creatures at Austin and passes. Austin fails to draw land, so he casts Azra Oddsmaker, getting a mirror from the chamber. He goes to combat and discards a non-permanent to Azra Trigger, so Baal doesn't get any value from Terrigrid. He targets Oof, which gets swinged at Josh, triggering and drawing two cards. He plays a command tower and passes. Baal finally casts his Brainstorm, and Josh is said to not have the third mana for his Hollow Breacher. Baal is stuck with two artifacts on top, so he casts Rograth, getting a mirror and passes to Josh. Baal hopes for anyone to draw a fetch to shuffle that top, and Josh does draw an Arid Mesa, but won't sacrifice it and passes. Late casts an Arcane Signet and swings at Josh before passing. Austin starts his turn casting Death, targeting Magus of the Moon. Baal could soon song it, but fears he would die to the bird, so he just taps for blue just in case. Josh is said that his Mesa can get in nothing other than a mountain, or a non-basic that becomes a mountain, so he taps blue and green from his other two lands. Magus enters, and Austin loses three, and gets another mirror. As soon as he attempts to move phases, Josh taps his mountainous Mesa and casts an uncountable Hull Breacher. In response, Late casts a Veil of Summer to try to draw something. Austin then attacks with Azra and Oof at late before passing. 
Val simply casts a useless Rhystic Study and passes. Josh starts his turn with a gamble for a dual caster mage and discards a Pact of Negation. He then casts Toxide for 8 tapped treasures, getting a tapped mirror in the process. He passes. Later draws and plays a mountainous wooded foothills as he regrets that Genesis Chamber. Austin draws, looks at the weird boar state we are all in and passes. Val draws and plays an arcane signet, hoping the oof will eventually leave the board. Josh draws and plays a mountainous polluted delta before passing. Late plays a forest and swings the pester might at Austin before passing. In his end step, Austin activates survival, discarding Mindblade Render, to which Val ponders if he wants it or not. But as the board grows larger, he rather have some more blockers, so he takes it despite being a useless pinger to him. Austin gets a Kalitas, Traitor of Get, and goes to his turn. He directly goes to combat swinging Azra at late, triggering the render making Baal lose one life and Josh getting a tad treasure. On Baal's turn, he wishes to draw a wheel, but doesn't, so he just passes. Josh draws and mutates Lord Drakis onto Dog side, returning Gamble to his hand. He then casts Gamble again for a Twin Flame and randomly discards a Carpet of Flowers, which is taken by Baal's third grid. He is setting up to win under the radar, so he passes. Later draws and plays a Gemstone Caverns to his sadness and swings the Pester Might at Austin again before passing. On his end step, Austin casts Assassin's Trophy on third grid, to which Bal responds with the Force of Will, pitching Silas. On his turn, Austin finally guesses his second swamp and casts Kalitas. He then swings Azra at late, triggering the render, making Bal lose one, and Josh gets a treasure. He then passes. Bal finally draws something impactful, considering Josh gambled twice and it appears not to be a way to clear the board but indeed a way to win, Bal casts Burning Inquiry, which, with Hull Breacher on the board, means everyone other than Josh discards 3 at random, while Josh does get to draw 3 before discarding. Bal gets 2 lands and a Rhystic Study from Josh, Nature's Chosen and a board double from Leite, Priest of Titania, Fiend Artisan and Tevish Sat from Austin while he discards all his interaction and sticking with a single Mox Diamond in hand. Nature shows an enchant Stergrid so he can attack with her and untap her as well for blocks, and Body Double comes in as a copy of Late Standard Shoot Dryad. All these creatures coming in trigger Genesis Chamber, and he then uptakes Tevish Sat, getting two zero one Black Thrills before passing. After all this randomness, Josh manages to top deck what he needed, the fifth land, a Bloodstained Mire. He casts Twin Flame on Dockside Extortionist, holding priority and casts Dualcaster Mage. When it enters, it targets Twin Flame, creating a copy that targets Dual Caster Mage, and so on, generating infinite Dual Caster Mages with haste and swings for lethal. GG. Thank you for joining us for today's match, everyone. Close to 14 steps did it for Vanifar, and Josh managed to pull through right in the end stretch. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons, and especially Izanagi, Stefan, TJ Rap, Mike Burr, Ajimu. Heated Chill, Drunken Housecat, V, RJ, Starfall and Brandon Glazebrook, our stack breakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing or by becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other Commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH related matters, join us on Discord. Join us again next week for a new set of Commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then!